My name is Dominique Lampkin. Uh, I'm the quarterback at Sarah High School, and I'm the class of 2022. Go DL7. Go DL7. Here, all loose. Go DL7. Go DL7. Captain's been going good, you know. A lot of camaraderie going on. Homework, go be homework, go three, one, two, three. Homework. You know, it's always room for improvement. You know, always still stuff that we got to do better. But camp overall has been very good. You know, we've been getting better on and off the field. Hey, all that talk, all that talk. Hey, so very today. simple. Very simple. We play football. 48 minutes all day. Hit him right in the mouth. Body shot, body shot, the body shot. Let's go, baby! Be Let's a go. dog, baby! Be Seven, a dog! Three, one, two, three! Let's go. Let's go. Back up, back up, back up. GSF Week 11 Game of the Week. Undefeated Sarah hosting undefeated VCHS. Dominic Lampkin, the sophomore quarterback, starting for the first time. QB Dalen McLemore unfortunately fractured his collarbone last game against Sacred Heart Cathedral. He's likely done for the year. Lampkin took over and rushed for 92 yards on six carries with two rushing touchdowns. He also completed seven of 10 passes for 133 yards. Dalen got hurt in the first quarter of a seven, maybe 14 nothing game. After he got hurt, uh, Especially because we had Valley next week. I, my mind was just like, I don't know what we're going to do. Our defense is definitely going to have to step up. There was this kind of overarching fog that sat over the sideline and sat over the team that day. And there was probably only one exception to that rule, and that was Dominic Lampkin, <laughs> who jumped in there, got the football, and played great. Dom just stepped into the role and acted like nothing. He, he didn't skip a beat. Dom jump in there like, whatever, give me the ball, I'll play. I don't even know what's going on. Just give me the ball, I'm gonna go play football. Which was awesome to see. He was so young and so raw that he didn't really understand what was going on. But he had just that, that confidence to be able to go out there and perform. All right, check it out, we're gonna get straight to some interviews. First, I need my man. Dom, come up here, seven. Where's Dom at? Well, Dom's a character. I mean, he's special. He's got a lot of talent, and uh, he's definitely going to have a bright future. Can you tell the kids what it is to be ready to fill your position at the quarterback position? Hey, watch a lot of film, pay attention at practice, and just keep balling out. Absolutely. It's very simple, very simple. I knew that when his uh, chance came, he was going to be ready for it. Now, you're a sophomore, man. Can you tell the kids what it's like to come up this early to play at the varsity level? Man, it's the best thing, best opportunity ever. He didn't get very many reps in practice, so uh, it'd be me getting the reps and then kind of having to explain it to him after because he wasn't able to get that full experience in practice. And we ran the ball a lot with him there, but we trusted him. And then when he needed to make those big-time throws, he made them big-time throws. 4-13 left in the game, 4th and 10 from their own 13-yard line. Lampkin back to pass. And now Lampkin scrambles for the first down. Across the 23-yard line, Sarah still alive. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Lampkin, back to pass, has time. Going over the middle to Terrence LaVille. Nice leaping grab and a first down for Sarah. Lampkin, looking left, throws high, and what a catch by LaVille. A one-handed grab. What a play by Terrence LaVille. Lampkin. Again, looking for LaVille, hits him in stride. LaVille has the first down and more, close to the 20-yard line. A gain of 23, and a first down for Sarah. 120 in the game. Lampkin, throwing left to the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence LaVille. And Sarah is with an extra point of tying the game. What a drive by the Padres. 14 plays, 97 yards. And they're within one. He stepped up in a big way for all of this team. We know we have to leap based off what he does, and he's picked up a really big role. And he stepped up big time. We 
mean, I had to kind of sit back a little bit more, to, like coach more, I guess. Definitely helped me in the long run because if you I have to explain something to someone, that really lets you know if you know it or not. So I was able to like deepen my knowledge of the game. Getting to physical therapy and taking care of his academics was, was number one. And then he would come and help out, you know, during the times he could do it, help out uh, Dom get ready. He's did a, a lot of mentoring to me. He's like another coach. He tell me every step, everything to do. That's a testament to his character. Like he wasn't gonna like not be a part of the team anymore. That wasn't even like an option. And who better to coach, you know, a sophomore than the most calming presence on the planet in the most pressure situations ever than Dalen McLemore. Because Coach Darius is usually upstairs calling the plays. The first person who should come off the field and talk to him is Dalen and nobody else. I'm too hectic. I'm like excited. And that became his role. Lampkin from the shotgun, looking right, has a man, what a catch, Terrence LaVille. Fourth and one for Sarah Lampkin, he's in for the touchdown. I'm just really excited right now, I got so much stuff going through my mind, I can't even think right now. What are you looking forward to next, man? NorCal State. <laughs> We're gonna finish these five weeks one at a time with the honor of being a Padre. It's the most important thing you can give to yourself and the program that this year. Okay? So I'm happy with your guys' effort, given all the circumstances. Very happy. Happy to be here. You happy to be here, Dom? Morning, happy. I'm happy to be here with you, Dom. You make me smile like as a funny kid. My relationship with Coach Walsh and um, Coach Bell. It's, it's just great, you know. They both took me under their wings and treated me as one of their own. You know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be the person I am today. We have the best coaching staff on the planet. Coach Mons, Coach McGee, Coach Wilbur, Coach Eagle, Coach Ortiz, Coach Bell, Coach Thomas who are here tonight. I think our staff is second to none. And uh, I put our staff up against anybody in California. And I don't say that because I'm here. I say that because these men put in the hours. Right again. This yes. cannot happen. Communication problems for week one. Go 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 special things about our program is the coaching, just the the staff. And I mean, if you, at any given point, you can look around. And Darius is coaching. Eagles coaching. Brian's coaching. Lyndon's coaching. Steve is coaching. Coach Thomas is coaching. And this isn't like we're not. This isn't planned. This is what happens all, every day. And it's just, it takes years to build that sort of staff. I mean, honestly, there's. But like, I think we're at a sweet spot of, of men that are around these kids. It's, it's just, it's unbelievable. Um, and you know, kind of what, what's been going on here at Sarah the last, pretty much since 2013, is there's been a, just, a, just an overall commitment with some of the best men I've, I've been around even before. I mean, shoot, we're doing crazy things before that, but you know, just the, the level of expertise and commitment um, you know, we, all of our scripts are uploaded onto our onto our phones. So everyone, when you watch when you watch practice today, you'll see everyone looking at their phones. And you know, there, there's effort behind that. That's for practice. It's just I'm I'm humbled when it comes to the guys that uh, that I coach with. And that's that's a reason to come to Sarah's just for that moment alone. Let alone the weight room and the guys that coach in there and the teachers that are in that building. And it's just you know, it's been 20 years, man. You know, it's. This is my 21st year, and it's just, uh, it takes a long time to build culture. But these men that facilitate that daily are, they're unique. We have a unique staff, and I'm blessed to have them. There's a high level of competition at Sarah. Nice fit! Nice fit! Nice fit! There you go! Essentially, the process of competition amongst the players is a huge part of, you know, making 
practice competitive and making the game not a shock you know a lot of teams get into a game and the, the speed of the game is a shock to them but we practice extremely hard the players compete against themselves and you know I, I think if you talk to them someone would say maybe you know it, it prepares them for what they see on Friday or Saturday Steven Monsef is our RD coordinator as you know is is absolutely amazing <laughs> Again, followed some big shoes around here, but has done an absolutely masterful job of organizing, managing, leading, guiding, and uh, bringing his wisdom to our defense. And it's hard for me to even consider this, but uh, I think our defense is, is as good as it's ever been, and our statistics prove that. The way our kids play, the way they're prepared, the way the coaches are prepared is, um, you know, I don't think anyone outworks Coach Monsef or our defensive staff. So having just, you know, and Coach Monsef commits, comes up from San Jose every single day. And, you know, that's, that's a tough drive. Got a few tickets along the way too, maybe one or two. But, you know, I, I wouldn't trade him out for any defensive coordinator in the country. He's uh, as, good as, as good as they get. So hopefully he'll, he'll want to stay here for a long time. I think ultimately the players have to believe in the coaching staff. Obviously, Coach Walsh, the track record is unparalleled, right? You know, and that trickles down to each position coach. Do the players believe in what you're teaching? And if they do, they will play hard for you and, you know, generally do what you ask or try to. What if you went like this? Okay. Really jack this guy up, but you gotta stay skinny. You know, we have guys that have been around the game. We have guys that have played at a high level, and we have guys that maybe didn't play at the highest level, but they took the time to understand football um, in a light that not not many it's not do. Always gonna be pretty, okay? You have to find a way to get your head placement and your hand placement in the correct spot in order for you to defeat the block and get to the ball carrier. Yeah, it all comes down to how you teach it, and we have great assistant coaches and they're great teachers of the game at each position. Coach McGee and Coach Monsef, they've taught me, you know, I've learned more about football in the one and a half years I've been at Sarah. Really, it's been a few months playing football than I have for, you know, the rest of my life before that. Pete Carroll, Andy Reid, these guys didn't play high-level football, but that doesn't mean you can't coach football. And I think we have a great blend of Hey, here's a guy that played college ball, right? Jeff Thomas started in the Big Ten, that middle linebacker. Um, and, and a good blend of, hey, Steven Monsef didn't play no big time ball, but he's dedicated and he's put in the work. And I can guarantee you he knows more about football than 99% of the people that have ever played football in this world. So I think we have a great blend of that uh, here at Sarah. And, you know, like you said, I think we do a good job of putting kids in a position to be successful. <laughs> These are uh, go routes. Center, center, center. What linemen have go routes on? Benny, Benny, you got a go route? What they do is, instead of taking 45 minutes in practice to teach your team the other team's offense and taking all the time up, this is already loaded on there. It loads the play on the other team, so the guys on scout team can look at the position they're on and then just run that, whatever it shows them on. Exactly, thank you. I send this card. Everybody looks down at their little thing. Here comes Spink. He's coming over. Doesn't even know. Doesn't even get in the huddle. I drew this period. This tells everyone where to go. We have a drone flying over here to film everything, so we can review it tonight. It saves all kinds of time, and guys learn. You can go through and get more done in practice, which is amazing. Here's the sad reality things. If you're a two or a three, you don't get to mess up. You guys understand that? You don't. Which is really, really hard, by the way, because you get the least amount of reps, you get the least amount of attention, but you're expected to know everything. But it's the reality of the world. I was a two for three years of my college career before I finally started. No one told me anything. No one gave me any time. No one gave me any attention. You understand what I'm saying? All right, when I was with the Baltimore Ravens at camp, not one coach talked to me to tell me what I was doing. 
and I had a 250 playbook, page playbook that I had to learn in four days because no one cared about me. And it's not that I don't care about you, but the point is, is this guy gets to make mistakes. He's a starter. He gets to make mistakes. He's a starter. I don't know why it's like that, but that's the way of the world. When your opportunity is called as a backup, you have to be ready. That goes for all you juniors right here that are looking to start on this team. And guess what? We got some really talented underclassmen coming up too. Now the fight that you always have internally in high school is do we do what's best for the team in terms of winning games or do we do what's best for the kid in terms of putting them in a position to succeed at the next level? And I think what makes us really special is we do both. Um, we put ourselves in a position to win football games while also promoting our kids and putting them in position to do what they do best. Um, you know, and, and that's something we take great pride in here at, at Sarah. Um, you know, a guy like Dominic Lampkin is a perfect example. Fakes the handoff, has room. He's going toward the end zone and he's in for the touchdown. Just like that, 52 yards. And Sarah's in control. Dom, like when he first came in, he was actually playing like he was playing in the secondary with us. Only positive thoughts for Dom. He's always got that confidence in him. Uh, he talks, he talks jazz at practice and stuff. Um, he'll own his game. But uh, with Dom, you see a lot of potential. So we're going to train him, and we're going to we're going to make that our goal to make him that, um, you know. But if Dominique Lampkin, in my opinion, in our coach's opinion, didn't have the potential to play D1 quarterback, we wouldn't have him there because um, he's a D1 safety. He's really special. Um, I always have a smile on his face, no matter what. Jojo, why he looks so big, bro? You don't look. Bro, bro, he look like a just a tall kid. He look he like do, he you know the organ. You know the. I know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Why did he not look like that as a freshman? Right, How's your weekend, food? Dominic? Uh, my weekend was good, you know, a lot of studying and film for the next game. He is sometimes here and there, he can be a little, a little much, but he balls out. He knows what's best for the team. Kind of reminds you of like a, a little Lamar. Dom, we went to middle school together. Uh, luckily, we ended up going to Sarah together. Um, I had a, uh, we was, he was gonna go somewhere else, but we had to convince him to come to Sarah, you know, so we can um, go ball out with each other. We've been teammates since about seventh grade, so, and we also went to the same middle school, so we already been knowing each other. We've been having chemistry and stuff like that. We're basically like, you know, like family. Freshman year, we was going crazy. We had a crazy uh, connection. I think he had like, we had like 20 some touchdown passes. So. Then we got moved up to varsity together. We both got to play on varsity as sophomores in the state championship, so that was a great experience to have. Trying to find someone, now he'll run it toward the sideline, and he gets out of bounds in the 32, a first down for Sarah. I was just thankful to uh, play with him because that kid has so much heart, uh, so much strength mentally. Scrambles left for the first down, gets an additional 15 yards for the targeting hit. And we know that a scholarship offer for a kid like Dominic Lampkin can absolutely change his life. We have him at quarterback because we think of highly of him there. Um, but like I said, if there was ever a moment where I didn't think Dominique could play D1 quarterback, he would play safety um, because I know that that would change the whole complexity and vision of his life 
um, as a young African American kid from San Francisco. Um, you know, so I think we do a really, really good job of making sure that we can win games and that we put our kids in positions to succeed and, and get looks at the next level. Over the middle to Terrence Laville, touchdown Sarah. Oh yeah, this all season I got um, two offers from Illinois State and uh, Fresno State. Uh, this season, you know, hoping to get more looks from colleges and stuff like that. You know who's been impressive to me? Dominique Lampkin. Lampkin was the best QB in CCS this spring. Numbers don't lie. 14 total touchdowns in five games definitely was the league's best. First quarterback drafted in the GSF All-Star Draft, three-star quarterback. He's got offers from Fresno State, Illinois State, and Idaho. You know, in terms of MVP and, and league MVP and all that, uh, that's not it's not really my job to speak on that stuff. Uh, uh, that's for the media and that's for the guys that write about you. They can figure that out. I went to uh, about two or three camps after the season. I did good at those camps, you know. The recruiting process is, going, is also going good. Um, but what I will say is, uh, you know, all things considering, Dominique Lampkin had a spectacular year. Um, I usually get a year to work with our quarterbacks in the summer. That didn't happen with Dominique this year. I usually get time and, and during school or after school to watch film with the quarterbacks. That didn't happen this year. So in terms of a coaching and actually being able to coach Dominique day in and day out, he didn't get what a guy like Day Day got in, in a year, um, which who obviously made a huge jump from being not ranked and no one knew about to, you know, an all-star uh, in the player of the year and probably would have been the Metro Chronicle player of the year had he not gotten hurt. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah, the Padres. And Dom, you're right, he's our silent leader. Um, he's not a real, real vocal kid, um, but he leads by actions, he leads by emotions, he leads by uh, example. Um, and, you know, and there were some times this year where, you know, we had to kind of get in his ear and say, Dominique, you know, people look up to you here. Um, and you have to act a certain way and you have to promote yourself in a certain light so that you know the team always believes um, in you. And I think he, he took steps in terms of maturity um, that I've rarely seen from a high school kid. Um, from a sophomore, from a kid who was a class clown to a kid that didn't take anything serious. Um, you know, everything was a joke. Um, you know, he's kind of learned that there's a time and place for everything and that um, if he wants to take this quarterback thing seriously, he has to, you know, know his role and his timing within that. But with six seconds left in the half, I call this play. Louisville bound Christian Pedersen with a juggling catch. Huge touchdown for the Padres to go up 19 to 10 at the half. Dominic Lampkin with the perfect ball to the corner. His third touchdown pass of the night. I'm a quarterback, not an athlete, so I'm trying to stay in the pocket more and get more passes. I think my best game or my favorite game of the whole season is against St. Francis, you know, because against St. Francis, that's like one of the best games I ever had at Sarah as a quarterback. I threw about four or five touchdowns, 11-11 on completions, and I threw for 300 plus yards that game. And I ran a touchdown in also. My line, they're a whole bunch of beasts. I wish I had, you know, a lot of money, you know, I'd take them all out to Sizzler. We go shake the Sizzler. <laughs> My favorite thing about Don was coming off the field, he would always get on the headset and say, I'm a quarterback. I'm a quarterback. And uh, I agree. Um, and I think he had something to prove this year, which is why he, he took it a little more serious. Last year it was kind of just, I do my thing, um, I go in when I go in. Um, if I ever get to go in right, because we had day day, um, then I'll do my thing and, and we'll move on to the next week. This year though, it's been more like, this is my team now, uh, it's my time now, and I'm trying to put on for my family, my school, and, uh, and for everybody that loves and supports me. Um, so absolutely special player, man. And I think, you know, what he's done this year with all things considering is, uh, has actually been really, really special. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see what he does with the year of actual training with me, um, with the year of actual film with me, um, and, and just doing the things that we normally do in our quarterback room that we didn't get a chance to do this year. The legacy I want to leave is everybody knowing what type of person I was and what type of football player I am and to win state.